Welcome to another episode of Casual Citizen, an ongoing series about the upcoming first-person MMO Star Citizen by Cloud Imperium Games. I'm your host, Alisiana, from the Mystic Worlds Gaming Blog. This week, we have another episode designed to kickstart your preparation for Alpha 3.0. We're going to review all flight-ready cargo ships. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy. Begin transmission. What's in and what's out. Originally, I was going to limit the conversation to ships CIG has flagged as cargo ships on robertspaceindustries.com. However, two popular ships are missing if I do that, the Cutlass Black and Constellation Andromeda, which I've decided are important to include. Whereas I haven't included the Mustang Alpha because it requires an optional cargo carrier which has yet to materialize in-game. Will the real cargo sizes please stand up? Unfortunately, there are conflicts between the cargo capacity for the ships listed in the actual ship stats page versus updates that were published as part of the Hull B Q&A. This is rather unfortunate since the average player isn't likely to see the updated cargo size information. With the exception of the Argo Cargo and Starfarer Gemini, which weren't included on the updated list, I'm going to reference these sizes from the Hull Q&A, which I will also link in the show notes. For the Argo Cargo, I pulled the value from the brochure that was available with the concept sale. For the Gemini, I used the updated size for the refueling variant, but I reduced the capacity based on the percentage variance that you can see in their actual technical overview pages. Directly from RSI's cargo chart, cubic meters, freight units, standard cargo units, we've gone through several iterations for measuring cargo, to the point that our own design team has confused the two on occasion. Today, we're setting the record straight with a master list. Dan Tracy has measured every ship currently in engine and made estimates for others, such as the Merchantman, which are not. As of today, this is the definitive list of cargo capacity, and these numbers will be eventually applied to the stats pages. Please pay special attention to the comparative sizes rather than the simple number. These are the best indicator of where these ships are intended to fall on the spectrum, regardless of the units of measurement we use. End quote. The inability to get the most accurate or updated cargo information more easily is a bit unfortunate for this particular class of ship. There's updated information available, it's just not where people will be looking for it. Now that understanding where and how I obtain the cargo sizes you hear me reference is out of the way, let's get started. I'll begin discussing the ships in order of cargo capacity, from the smallest to the largest. To reiterate, these are flight-ready cargo ships only. Why cargo hauling? Let's begin by defining cargo hauling as I suspect there will be varying definitions. Establishing mine is important for the data that I'll share in a bit and what's available on alicianasworld.com. I differentiate between trade and cargo hauling. For me, cargo hauling is picking up goods in one place and delivering them to another. You have no ownership of the items being transported. You don't know or care what they cost to acquire. You're not involved in selling them. You're merely the bus driver. Merchants and traders, on the other hand, care about the cost to purchase goods versus the resale value. Traders and merchants earn revenue from selling goods. Cargo haulers are paid to transport goods. I think cargo hauling will be a good, active profession for players of a certain play style and an excellent passive profession for most everyone. Personally, I only plan to do cargo hauling as a secondary, passive mode of generating income. If I'm going that way and I have space available on my ship, by all means, I'll deliver those goods for you. Money makes the world go round. The persistent universe side of Star Citizen will contain many of the common trappings of any MMO. 
Specifically, you'll need to earn in-game currency to support yourself. In this case, support fueling, arming, repairing, and possibly upgrading your ship. You may want to do the same for your character, such as obtain better armor and weapons. You'll have insurance premiums to pay. You'll have hangar fees to pay. Money, money, money. For most players, your existence in Star Citizen will require that you earn a living in the game. For those who don't want to focus on combat as a means of earning currency, or who aren't particularly interested in having PvE missions dictate their actions, cargo hauling is a viable income-generating profession. You can obtain work via contracts that will be available at the Trade and Development Division job boards. You can accept cargo transport specific missions. You can shuttle cargo for other players. All of this while seeing the world. Cargo hauling is also one of the player professions that can more easily be done solo if that's your preference. Cargo ships that will be available in Alpha 3.0. Alpha 3.0 is going to give us the first taste of cargo hauling. I suspect we'll see cargo missions from NPCs. I anticipate being able to pick up work at the Trade and Development Division locations such as the Job Well in Art Corp Area 18. The physical implementation in-game is likely to contain some placeholder activity for loading and unloading cargo similar to the placeholder implementation for ship repairs we see at Cryastro. In other words, there'll be some hand wave -um going on for a while. Bringing cargo hauling online will also innately bring opportunities for other player professions and playstyles, such as pirates and mercs. You need to keep these things in mind if you're going to pursue moving merchandise. Space can be a dangerous and unforgiving place. Common sense and situational awareness will be important. I'm crossing my fingers that ship security comes online with cargo. Otherwise, lots of unnecessary tomfoolery is going to be taking place on landing pads that will be 100% outside of a pilot's ability to control. If you want to take part in the early alpha testing of cargo hauling, let's take a look at the ships that are flight ready and have cargo space available. The Argo Cargo Directly from CIG The Argo MPUV-1C, commonly called Argo Cargo, is a dedicated merchant transfer ship. Vast numbers of Argo cargos are responsible for loading and unloading goods onto massive long-haul transports and miners that cannot otherwise land on planets or dry docks, such as the Hull D and the Orion. While some captains choose to operate their own Argo, others pay privately owned ship operating services. End quote. I don't see the Argo cargo as a ship that makes sense for cargo hauling in Alpha 3.0. Lacking a quantum drive and only possessing six standard cargo units of space, it's the least ideal option for participating in cargo hauling in the Alpha. We don't have any flyable ships that are too large to land in order to deliver cargo themselves. Unless you have no other option and simply want to try the mechanics, to me, this is a non-starter. The Avenger Titan From CIG Lacking the prisoner cells of the Stalker or the EMP generator of the Warlock, the Titan's hold is free to carry cargo. Couple that available space with the Avenger's tried and true combat abilities and you've got a good light cargo hauler that's more than capable of handling itself in a fight. End quote. Titan is the standard Stalker chassis with the prison cells swap for cargo space. I like this as an option for people who want to do a small amount of cargo hauling and combat. The Avenger holds its own nicely in combat and was for a time my preferred combat ship. I think its speed and maneuverability also make it less of a target for piracy. Because it has non-cargo variants, its appearance in the skies also doesn't scream, I'm carrying cargo. I am, however, very surprised at the Titan's 12 standard units of cargo space. There's probably an update to that number not readily available. 
I just can't see how swapping out three prisoner cells nets so little additional space. However, all elements combined, I think it's a reasonable choice for playtesting cargo hauling during the alpha or as an interim short-lived first solution in the live game. The Aurora CL From CIG Customized for mercantile and trading excursions, the Aurora Clipper is the perfect vessel for aspiring entrepreneurs and seasoned traders alike. Swapping a small power plant and armor capabilities for an extended cargo capacity, the Clipper ups the ante for personal merchant craft. End quote. We'll probably see many Auroras taking part in cargo hauling. We know from CIG that this is one of the more popular ship packages, hence more people have Auroras than other ships. The CL variant in particular is very good in terms of shipped cost versus cargo capacity coming in at 23 standard cargo units. Auroras are also very durable for a starter ship, making them good for cargo transport and using them to avoid combat at all costs. You simply have to survive until you reach your drop-off location. The Reliant Core from CIG. With the Reliant Core, MISC adds to its already impressive lineup of ships, a smaller, introductory class spacecraft. Using advanced Xi'an designs, the Reliant features broad, sleek wings, omnidirectional thrusters, and a fully articulated two seat cockpit that supports horizontal and vertical flight modes. All of this combines with a larger carrying capacity than many ships in its class to make the core a natural choice for short-range hauling. Or, with the simple addition of a few optional components, this can-do ship can do anything you dream of. End quote. I have mixed feelings about the Reliant core for cargo transport in its current implementation. Purely from an investment perspective, comparing the cost of the ship versus its cargo hauling capacity, it does well. It's a $65 USD ship with 30 standard units of cargo space. However, we've yet to see the speed boost it's supposed to have when it's flying in vertical mode. It lacks the versatility of being viable as a combat ship without swapping to the TANA configuration, which isn't doable yet and it's more suited to short hop jobs because there's no bed aboard the Reliance. Beds are a feature that will allow you to log out safely in space, save the location and return to it the next time you log in versus spawning at the nearest space station. For alpha gameplay, I've kept my core to test out cargo hauling. However, it's not a permanent ship for me. I have access to a Cutlass Black by way of having purchased a red. The Cutlass Black From CIG Drake Interplanetary claims that the Cutlass Black is a low-cost, easy-to-maintain solution for local in-system militia units. The larger-than-average cargo hold, Rio seat, and dedicated tractor mount are, the company literature insists, for facilitating search and rescue operations. Certainly not for anything criminal. Of course not. End quote. For passive cargo hauling, I think the Cutlass Black is a real contender for bang for your buck. It's a versatile ship that supports multi-crew activities, has 33 standard cargo units of hauling space, and whether that 33 is filled up with your own legit cargo or what you pilfered from others, that's up to you. Surprisingly, the Cutlass also comes with a size 4 shield, the second largest among the flight-ready ships. This makes it another ship that's viable for solo cargo hauling with the intention of outrunning and outsurviving anyone who gives chase. I expect to see many players using it in Alpha 3.0. And when you see one, you won't know if it's carrying cargo or coming to get yours. The Freelancer Mercantile From CIG Freelancers are used as long-haul merchant ships by major corporations, but they are just as frequently used 
and repurposed as dedicated exploration vessels by independent captains who want to operate on the fringes of the galaxy. End quote. Here's where I think we cross the line into ships that are better served as multi-crew cargo hauling vessels. You're getting to slower moving ships that are less maneuverable, leaving you open to being swarmed if you can't get away. And knowing that the other features these ships were designed to take advantage of aren't in the game yet, many will bet you're carrying cargo. So if you are, be prepared to defend yourself. The Freelancer variant that is flyable is designed for moving cargo. It has a nice bump in capacity from the Reliant Core, coming in at 52 standard cargo units. It's also a very defensible ship with a good pilot and someone in the turret. It has sleeping berths, making it a good fit for long-duration shipping if that's something you want to pursue in the live game. If you're considering the Freelancer as a long-term cargo option, you might also want to take a look at the Freelancer Max, which has twice the cargo capacity. The Constellation Andromeda from CIG The Constellation Andromeda, a multi-person freighter, is the most popular ship in RSI's current production array. Constellations are beloved by smugglers and merchants alike because they are modular, high-powered, and just downright iconic looking. End quote. The Constellation Andromeda makes the list because it has 134 standard cargo units of space and is flyable. Strictly speaking, this is the more militarized variant. The Taurus is the transport variant, but it's not flight ready. I doubt I'd attempt doing cargo hauling solo in Akani. You will be a target, and a ship of this size is better served having its turret manned and bodies available to repel borders if attempts are made to do that. Even having an escort might be advisable once you start moving cargo in a ship of this size. Unlike how the persistent universe combat happens now, there will be more incentive to go after larger ships that may be carrying cargo, especially if some of the cargo survives when the ship is destroyed. Now it's a matter of who can I kill before they kill me if I want to engage at all. For many players, there's little to no incentive of picking a fight right now with larger ships. All you get in return is a repair and rearming bill and bragging rights. Come 3.0, that same fight now nets you a chance at profits. Different ball game that requires a higher level of situational awareness if you're going to be transporting cargo in these larger target ships. The Starfarer from CIG The Starfarer differs from traditional bulk freighters in one key way. It has a dedicated fuel platform. The Starfarer is designed not only to load, store, and protect fuel stasis units, it's designed to take in spaceborne hydrogen and then refining it for use without landing. The Starfarer can also be used to ferry traditional bulk cargo pods, but in such cases, the fuel refining equipment would be useless. This equipment is modular and can be swapped out for another package that will handle dry operations. End quote. Now we've hit the largest ship in the Alpha playtest by a considerable amount. Similarly, they have the largest cargo payloads. The Starfare refueling variant, which is considered the transport variant, has 4,044 standard cargo units of space, with the Gemini coming in at an estimated 3,033 standard cargo units. Remember that the number I'm using for the Gemini is based on the updated transport variant SCUs that were provided with the Hull B Q&A. I think running cargo in either of these ships, assuming you can get one to spawn, will be very exciting for those involved. Massive shenanigans incoming of people trying to seize or destroy them for their cargo. I think most when carrying cargo will be properly manned and have escorts. This has the potential to broaden the combat fields seen in the persistent universe to multiple locations. Anywhere one of these is in transit, 
versus what we see right now, which is mostly in and around Korea or Grimhex. As long-term cargo hauling vessels, I think there are better options unless transporting fuel or other liquid goods with the Starfarer will be configurable in the future. As a pure hauler, I'd be looking into the Hull series. But in the meantime, these have the largest payload for many months to come. The first Hull series ship, the Hull C, isn't due until Alpha 3.1, which I think is likely to be somewhere in the spring of 2017. Cargo Hauling According to the Lore Knowing where to look for cargo hauling work will be simple in Alpha 3.0. You're picking it up in Stanton and delivering it to somewhere else in Stanton. You won't have much research to do on your own about where to go. You won't really need to evaluate if the cost of fuel and a crew is worth the trip. It won't be that easy as more star systems come online and more players engage in the alpha. Things will become more competitive and some level of logistics planning and consideration will be required to remain profitable. Helping with logistics planning is the primary goal of Alyssiana's world. It aims to provide you with information necessary to help you make more knowledgeable decisions when it comes to investing time, effort, and money into player professions. It helps you identify where to look for work, tells you about that area, and lets you refine the list of where to look for work based on other personal preferences, things like how dangerous is that star system on average? Are there other opportunities I can take advantage of in a star system that makes picking this location better than another? Can I string together a multi-hop route to maximize my net profits? It's likely that most star systems will have some availability of cargo hauling opportunities via NPC-specific missions and the Trade and Development Division. However, showing up and hoping that the available jobs fit the capabilities of your ship might not be the best use of your time. The Ark Star Map and the Galactic Guides, both subject to change, reflect the world that's being built, and both contain information about player professions. Alyssiana's world ties these two assets together by mapping the lore from the guides to the physical universe of the star map into what I call dossiers. Each dossier is tying together the locations and the lore specific to a player profession. For example, if you have a small cargo hauling ship and are just starting out, what are some of the best places for you to find steady work? Perhaps you're on the other end of the scale. You'd rather do less frequent, longer duration jobs. Where are you going to start looking for those? Looking through the star map and galactic guides, you can find the answers for both of those scenarios if you want to spend hours upon hours pouring through it, but you don't have to. Checking out my cargo and trade dossier page will list all star systems with explicit galactic guide information about job opportunities. This information will be updated regularly and continue to grow as I slowly make my way through all of the CIG published content. And I'm able to include information from the systems themselves when they go live. On the trade and cargo dossier page, you can view locations that have explicit lore related to cargo hauling contracts. Mention job opportunities for specific types of cargo hauling, short hop, versus long duration. Review potential volume of work. Review import and export activities in those same systems which can represent opportunistic trading opportunities, such as picking up a rare item you can sell elsewhere for a profit. You can review black market and piracy in those areas if you're inclined to participate in those endeavors. Learn about the star systems where these opportunities exist and filter them based on your personal preferences for population, economy, and danger threat holds or government alignments. Simple, straightforward, and a means to make more informed routing options when planning cargo runs. Check it out. I hope you find it useful. That's it for this episode of Casual Citizen. 
You can find links to all the ships discussed in the show notes and check out alicianasworld.com to see the growing compendium of information to assist players with logistics planning. If you've enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing to my channel and giving the show a thumbs up. This is Aliciana signing out until next time. Be kind and fly safe. And transmission.